Howdy, it's Tubal Kane again, and this time with an update on my little Rhodes Shaper that I recently bought. Now, uh, over 10,000 people have already watched uh, the video entitled Tubal Kane Buys a Rhodes Metal Shaper. So, if you have not seen that, go back and, and catch that. And now, I'm going to talk just a little bit about some of the improvements uh, and things that I have uh, done to this and noticed about this Rhodes Shaper. I had never heard of a Rhodes shaper, but this is a Rhodes uh, serial number 1869, and that places this machine uh, having been built sometime probably in the mid-20s, 1925 to 1930, something about in that range. And originally it would have been flat belt drive, and it's been converted, and a pretty nice job of conversion, to a V-belt with a smaller motor. Uh, even that was probably many years ago. It's in quite good condition. All the scrapings are still there. Uh, however, it is kind of noisy in regards to the gears. So I don't know if there's a wear there or if that's just the nature of this beast. One of the first things I did to this machine was to uh, rewire it with a new cord and a grounded plug. Uh, I like my machines grounded. And then the next thing I did was to build this guard around the belt back here because that was a little bit hazardous and uh, very likely to get your finger or something caught in there. And I've known several men that have lost fingers uh, with uh, V-belts and pulleys uh, over the years. And uh, I don't want one of them to be me, but I remember one of the janitors in the early years of my teaching uh, ran his finger through the fan belt on the car and lost part of his index finger on his right hand and now they call him stubby. I like a place to hang tools on my machines so I put this little tool rack here on the side of it uh, using some existing uh, tapped holes in that base and that way I can uh, hang some wrenches and hammers and then uh, there's a couple uh, on the front side too. There's still a chip pan there that I t t t tend to put things in. It's probably not a good uh, place to do it, but you got to have some place to put things. The first time I turned this little work light on a couple weeks ago when I got the machine scared the heck out of me because it was instantly a flash of electricity in here and a, a bright arc and a hissing and uh, uh, I had to immediately replace the innards of this socket here, which I happen to have one in in stock. And now I got a nice work light that gets right in there where you need it the most. This machine was made in uh, Hartford, Connecticut, the Rhodes Machine Company, USA. That USA on there helps to date it, as uh, someone told me. But I also built a belt guard on this side, and that was a bit of a challenge, too. Made of uh, aluminum sheet metal. But there is very much a tendency to put your hand on that uh, hand wheel there, and, and you could, if you overreached, you, you'd quickly be in the belt. So that's, I'm glad I got those guarded. I don't have to think about that anymore. Now, uh, several of you guys uh, were worried that I was going to cut that bracket off down there which uh, the original uh, drive system was mounted to that. Uh, I said I was going to saw that off. Actually, I, I said that just to get a rise out of you, and I sure did get a rise out of you. But it's going to remain, at least for as long as I own it. I believe I mentioned this in the other video, but uh, this machine did not come with a vise, so I put my number 21 brown and sharp vise on there, a little 4-inch vise, and in order to mount it, I... Uh, put uh, one of those aluminum plates, those ground aluminum plates on top of uh, the machine itself and that's held down with T-bolts and then the vise in turn held down with 5 8 fine bolts onto the uh, uh, aluminum plate so I didn't alter the machine in, in any way. And uh, in my tool drawer and in my junk I found this uh, 8 point uh, wrench fits on there perfectly, the uh, half inch end of it. Longer than what I need, but I got so much leverage with this I'll never need to hit it with a lead hammer. 
Well, that's kind of a nice little feature. Glad I found that. And I've been taking some sample cuts here just for the fun of it. David Hale from the great state of Vermont sent me a wonderful packet of information on these road shapers. He owns one and uh, I'll show you some of the things that he uh, gave me in this nice packet that I received uh, just a few days ago and thank you David. But I always have to laugh here. He packed this really well and there's a piece of cardboard in here you know to stiffen it and it's marked do not bend, do not bend. But the, here at the top the envelope was quite mutilated and the post office put on received in damaged condition. But what slays me about that, and I've seen a lot of other uh, that I received over the years that say received in damaged condition. Well received by who? You're receiving it from yourself but kind of disclaiming it like, oh it's not our fault, we already received it in damaged condition. So, uh, I don't know. Why is it that a FedEx and uh, uh, UPS seemed to get it right, but thank you, David. And uh, excuse that little rant there, but the actual uh, items here were not damaged, so the, the cardboard protect, protected that. But uh, David sent a, a two page letter uh, explaining many things about these road shapers, and uh, I'm going to read through that several times. And uh, you know, I was only familiar with South Bend, Amico, Sheldon and Atlas and the J-Line uh, shapers, and they were all seven inches. So that was a common size, but I had not heard of this, but it sure seems to be a quality piece, even though shapers are totally outmoded. And I had a laugh. I got a, a email just the other day, or a, yeah, I guess it was an email from a guy works in a shop and he said that they still got a big old shaper there and he said the only thing we use it for is to crush beer cans because my boss likes to drink Pabst Blue Ribbon and we smash the cans in there so back and forth back and forth yeah kinda humorous I thought so there's a picture of his uh, shaper in the bed of a truck color print too and there it is. Uh, he said it was uh, wet and damaged when he bought it and he totally disassembled it. There it is in pieces. And that's the vertical uh, shaping attachment. I do not have that. I wish I did. But I'll show you that in some of the Rhodes literature here presently. And that's the setup that he's got on there for uh, uh, the, the motor drive little different than mine but not a whole lot that's what the original vice looked like this is apparently uh, pages from the original Rhodes uh, literature seven inch shaper with the vertical attachment that could be mounted. You, took, you take the ram off and that would be mounted on there to do slotting and uh, keyways and things like that. Some of these came with a uh, tilting uh, bed right there. Uh, that's not the right word for it, but the whole thing would, would swivel like that. That was an option, apparently. I think about 5,000 of these were manufactured over the years. There's the vertical slaughter in position. And you could get a rotary table. And that's what the drive looked like originally, with a GE motor. And all the specifications. Pretty awesome. These are reprints from articles from the Machinist magazine over the years featuring the road shaper as well as other machines. So that was interesting to look at. There's an ad for it in an old magazine from 1912. That ad was run in 1912. I'm not going to show you all of this. But here are the original patent drawings. 
patented in 1914. Well, that, that was probably the uh, attachment. And the inventor was uh, Mr. Rhodes himself. Looks like Leverett, maybe is his name. Oh, those are neat uh, patent drawings. There's the slaughter. Showing the internal mechanism. And the description to the patent office. It might be interesting to note that this shaper served most of its life in the engine room of a ferry boat out east and eventually was salvaged out of there and then uh, put into a warehouse but at that time it was damaged during uh, a hurricane and became wet when the uh, area flooded and uh, just sat there for years and then finally got uh, restored and thank goodness that somebody had uh, wherewithal and uh, went to all the work of restoring something like this. These two step pulleys here are not matching step pulleys. So when you change the belt from one step to another, the motor uh, can be adjusted back and forth, but, but it doesn't have enough travel. So in reality, a fella needs to, to have several belts on hand in order to accommodate the different steps. So I hope to find uh, uh, some step pulleys that match like you would see on a, a drill press so you can just walk it from one step to another without any other nonsense. And there's the guard that I built. Now be sure and continue to watch my videos because in the future you'll see more and more of this little machine in action, I hope, as I master its intricacies and uh, hope to get the correct tool holder for this. But they're a fascinating machine to use, although incredibly slow. What it's doing right now, and it will produce a nice finish, but what it's doing now, I could have done on the Bridgeport Mill in less than two minutes. This is Tubal Kane saying so long for now and watch my other videos.